Hey guys, today I want to go ahead and finish the homemade CNC machine. Last time we left it off with working on the dust shoe and getting our router mounted. I want to finish those things off and then level the table and begin to use our machine. Finally, let's get started. <laughs> Look what I have, a work zone storage bin. I'm going to start getting my screws in bulk and keeping this thing full. I've got a couple of these and I think I'll use them. I've been finding my nuts and bolts in bins like this. That's hard to do. It slows you down. So hey, I'm going to get organized. Someone asked me where I got the transformer for the CNC controller. I got it from this place. And uh, once you order from them online from here, they'll send you a catalog for the rest of your life. Anyway, they have uh, stepper motors. They got all kinds of neat stuff in here, actually. They got some binder clips I might get for the uh, machine. Anyway, check these guys out. There's their website. Should I cut it? I'm pondering if I should cut this or not. Hmm. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. I think that came out okay. Little odd areas around here that I filed down. Looks okay. Yeah, we'll get it on there. Locking color fits on there nice, and look, the logo's still on there. <laughs> Time to put the magnets in. If you want to remove writing from PVC, lacquer thinner works really good. Look at that. Lacquer thinner. And then I can paint these if I want to. Those things are really nice.
I would say that the uh, dust skirt is a success. There's very little dust on here compared to what I cut off, you know. And um, I was thinking too, the machine ran quite cool. And I'm glad now that I reused this metal collar because I think that helps to sink heat away from the, uh, the bearings and stuff like that inside the router. Anyway, I'll let the uh, dust settle a little bit and clean this up. This stuff has a little membrane on the top that I usually end up peeling off when I'm ready to use it. And you can use it on the first cut, but it's going to come off anyway. But it's just a thin piece of um, clear material, like a, a vapor barrier maybe. Anyway, yeah, you're going to want to remove that after the first cut because it'll just start coiling up on your bits and stuff. So yeah, once you get a corner, you can just pull it up. Already taken off this side. You might as well do both sides that way. One won't be pulling one way, you know, even though we're going to double side this down. It's fairly flat. It's not 100% flat, but we're working with wood. So there's a tolerance for sanding anyway, and a hundred thousandths isn't going to make much of a difference in wood. So anyway, let's double side tape this in the pocket and then we'll be done. Fits right down in that pocket. That's what I want. So I'm very serious about this not moving or popping up. This is good stuff. Here's the brand name of the tape that I use. It costs twice as much as the cheap stuff, but it's worth it. Roll from the middle out to the ends. Now this foam is raised up slightly, so when I cut something, like say I wanted to cut this board, I could still overhang this foam. That'll be fine. But it's uh, fairly flat now. Hopefully. So I'd say we got a lot done today. The dust skirt's on and functioning. The vacuum system's picking up great. We've got our table leveled and re-foamed for our sacrificial surface. And we've used a half inch end mill on it. It cut just fine. So I think we're ready for our first project. I've already put the clamps back on and I've got a piece of wood under the clamps. So I'm going to try to make something and see how it uh, performs. So we'll let you know on the next one, perhaps. Give us one of these if you like this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.